All right, guys, welcome back down the carbon car system. So, this is probably the most exciting product I've seen from Kenwood in the last couple of years. It's a real big change from their traditional audio visual and multimedia lineup. This is a new model, it's a 10.1 inch screen. So, this looks like a plain box. This is a sample box for Australia. This will be coming out very shortly in Australia. This is a new model, the DMX9720 XDS. Now, this is a full HD. 10.1 inch screen and it has everything on it and I'm gonna run you through the unboxing today So obviously when this comes out in production, it'll be a full color box and everything guys um, As you can see when we did that uh, zoom in there, you'll probably see it's a sample product for Australia, okay? Um, but this is a working production sample. We're gonna show you this in a car. We're gonna install it um, Within oh well, today in the Camry. We'll show you that in this video But let's unbox it first so you can see what I'm actually talking about So come check this out so this is all your traditional stuff that you do get with the Kenwoods. You do get all your wiring looms, your external microphones. Um, as you can see, this is a full production sample as well. So this is what the final release will actually look like. You do get all your screws, your typical remote controls, a GPS receiver. Now, this unit doesn't have GPS built into it, but it does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which is honestly 95% of the market out there now, and where you want to be sitting because you can control um, navigation apps such as Google Apps, Waze Navigation, um, Apple Maps, and any other apps that are approved for, on the App Store that they allow. Uh, so it's a real good way to go. Um, so they do give you the GPS antenna because it improves the accuracy of those apps. So it is included as well. Um, you do get a DAB antenna as well. So you get your normal digital AM, FM, but your DAB plus digital radio as well, which is kind of cool. But check this thing out guys. So we've opened it already, but I just thought we'd uh, rebox it to show you what you're gonna get and how it's gonna come. All right, this is a beast of a thing. Now, this is your typical double din chassis. So this is your 180 mil wide double din chassis. So it's still gonna mount like your typical radios um, that go in every single vehicle out there. So that's uh, universally compatible with anything out there, not just the Toyotas. Um, we are gonna show you in a Toyota today, but it'll fit anything out there. This is a new me mechanical front of this where the 10 inch is gonna actually sit. And this is gonna be like a floating screen like you would get on some of your BMWs, your Mercedes, your Mazdas, any, any of those new style screens out there. Uh, but check this out guys, this is awesome. Whoop. Disregard that box, but this is it. This is the screen that is gonna go in your car. And it's gonna be a central hub for literally controlling everything in your car and for certain vehicles, that's going to be a whole heap of different things, um, such as you know, vehicle information on this thing with compatible vehicles. Um, the cool thing about this is Kenwood have actually put a dial on here for your control and your volume. Um, most other large 10 inch screens out there that I've seen don't actually have that, which is a nice touch by Kenwood to be a bit differentiated from the rest of the market. Um, but this is the back of the unit here, so you can really see this. We'll show you how it clips on the unit in just a moment. It is completely adjustable, but it is a, a nice slimline floating 10.1 inch HD screen. So it is high definition, very clean along the button. It is a mechless unit, so there is no CD, no DVD. So it's almost like those tablet style that you're gonna go put in your dash, uh, which is very nice. So you don't have to go to that expense of trying to put your aftermarket tablets in. So this is how it's gonna work. I'm gonna try and clip this up. If you come in and have a look at this. Um, so this will actually slot in, uh, let me get this right, Ooh. just here, hang on. sorry, hang on. there yeah, we go, skip hard one there we go, now that's how it's going to slot in, okay, so it slots in the top there, to give you an idea of how this is going to work, you got a few screws that will need to be mounted in there, so just in here, I'm going to show you this when we actually put it in the car and have it operating, and it'll mount like that, okay? So that'll be free floating in the car. Now this screen is completely adjustable on your tilt. So it's got a minus 10 degree to a 45 degree angle. Um, so you, depending where it's mounted in any car, you can actually change that angle and also for sun glare, which is nice. Um, one of the cool touches is it does have screws here on the side. These allow the screen to slide up and down vertically. Again, for mounting in all the different vehicles, that'll allow that a little bit of ease, um, depending on the style or curvature of your dash, which is a cool feature as well. Now, again, on the adjustability of the screen, on the bottom of it, 
They've actually put four screws as well. And this will do your forward and back mounting of the screen. Again, just makes it easier to mount in all those different vehicles out there. Um, nice voice control button on the front here as well, which I didn't pick up before. Um, so that's kind of cool. You'll be able to control um, your Siri and your Android Assistant directly from screen. By the looks of it, we will try that out soon. Now, some of the key features of this, which we'll talk about in the car, um, you do have your wireless, so your Wi-Fi built into it. So we'll do wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, DAB Plus antenna, um, radio, sorry, as well. It does have HDMI, which is good, because there are other units in the lineup that you do not have HDMI. So this unit has HDMI. Um, it also has four camera inputs. So that is incredible because you can do your side cameras now, that your blind spot cameras, as well as your front and rear cameras. So that's a nice touch. Um, has single USB, which is fine because you're just going to charge the one phone um, because you'll be using it wirelessly predominantly. Um, so it is a fast charge, 1.5 amp. You'll be able to charge anything in your car with that. Um, it still has your standard features like your Bluetooth, so it'll run two phones simultaneously via your Bluetooth. Um, it has high res audio as well for all you audio files out there that want to run uh, high resolution files. It'll actually do high resolution wirelessly, okay, through your Wi Fi. And it has the LDAC files as well from Sony for those um, highly, highly encoded audio files from Sony, which will give you a high sample bit rate. So that's more for your audio file guys out there, but it'll certainly do that. So this is a, basically a top of the range unit without the CD, DVD, which you pretty well don't need anymore because you can run it all wirelessly. Um, comes with everything, live screen, very, very nice looking unit. Um, I'm going to show you one other thing, which I'm going to talk about in another video. And this is probably going to be the greatest thing they've done. Uh, there's a little port here called an iData link. Now this is um, basically a comms port and it's a software comms port for an interface that will attach this directly to your vehicle. Now we've never had this before in Australia, it was predominantly in the US and Canada and North America. But this is going to allow a lot of the car info to be displayed on screen. And it'll also help do things like retain your factory cameras, steering wheel controls, tire pressure. It'll show things like that, gauges for your vehicle. Um, some vehicles it'll do AC control. Uh, it will also retain amplifiers. So for example, on the Toyotas, if you've got a JBL audio system, previously you would need interfaces to retain that. This new iData link port will allow all that with the correct interface, okay guys? So that is a really cool port. Uh, we've got them coming in. So this is the first one in Australia. So we've ordered those uh, samples to come in for you guys. I'm going to show you how that works in a car in a later video. So check out our videos on uh, Carbon Car Systems on YouTube and I'll show you exactly how easy that will make the installation um, and how many features you will retain. So let's check this out in a car and see how it actually operates. All right, guys. So now we're down in the car. We're going to show you the install of this new DMX 9720 XDS unit, which is the new 10-inch screen. Now, this is your standard double-din style screen from Kenwood. So this is one of their standard nav units from this year's lineup. Uh, this is a Toyota Camry 2018 model. Perfect kind of vehicle for it, but it will suit any kind of vehicle out there because of that adjustable front 10-inch screen. Um, all your climate controls in the bottom. We're going to show you how to put that out of the way. But Let's put this in store and we'll show you the finished product after we change it, but that's what it looks like prior and we'll show you afterwards. All right, so there it is out, the standard unit, but I'm just gonna show you this, guys, because this is how it's gonna install because you probably get a few questions about how it would actually install. Um, you're gonna put the standard double DIN in like you would any other stereo, okay? That's not gonna change. Um, so it's really easy. It's not gonna be any different for your installers out there or anyone that wants to do this themselves at home. It's gonna be relatively easy. You're just gonna line them up like you typically would and we're gonna move those brackets down to here and then we're gonna mount the unit back in the car. Um, but there you go, you guys. You can see it's really gonna be simple. We're gonna we can retain these little side wings for the Toyota because that's still gonna fill out the normal dash behind the screen. Um, otherwise, it'd be just a little bit of hole there, which is typical on any Toyota if you don't have those fillers. So we're just gonna move those down and it's gonna be done. I'm gonna whack it back in the car. This is gonna be a simple install. I'm gonna show you how it operates. All right, guys, so there it is actually in the car. So that's before we put the front screen on. So we thought we'd just give you a look at that, how it sits in the dash. Pretty nice, there's some angles for you. Very, very clean. So that's your typical sort of double din stereo install. So let's put this screen on, we'll adjust it, turn it on, get our first look at this new baby. So here is the vertical adjustment, guys, which is really, really cool. So we're gonna show this to you. We've just undone the screws here on the side. And you can see here, as you slide this up and down, you got a vertical 
um, upwards and downwards motion, and that's going to change where the screen's going to sit. So it actually sits there really nice, put your screws back in. Because, for example, when we're on this car, this is why it's so useful, is when it's in here, you got your AC controls here. So you want to be able to push it up a bit and adjust it. And if you've got your vents here, you want to be able to change the angle. So by the time we change this back a little bit, you're still going to get your airflow here and you've still got your driver's side vent um, and it's going to be perfect. So it's going to sit really nice in this dash. And Jesus Christ, doesn't that almost look like it's meant to be there? Like that is so clean. Like it's just per perfectly on these lines. And oh man, I couldn't tell you how much I love that. So... All right, guys, so here we go. We're turning it on for the second time today. We just had a look at it quickly off camera, but here it is. Now, this screen is fully adjustable, guys. You can actually tilt it and move it and adjust it as you need. It's very, very sturdy in the car. Um, you got the warning type setup as you come in, but this is what it's going to sit, out, sit like in the vehicle. So you've got plenty of adjustability, and there it is. Looks very, very nice. So this is the HD screen, as you can see here. We actually paired up the Apple CarPlay just a moment ago to make sure everything was working. Uh, as we wanted to show you it working uh, but let's have a quick look at some of the the new things on this to show you and once this actually comes in production or into australia we'll show you a bit more information about what's actually going to be possible uh, with these new data controllers and things like that so firstly some of the cool things about this uh, ken would have obviously their dash cameras in the range and they've also got a new hd composite uh, reverse camera as well we have not set up the reverse camera on this vehicle because it's just a sample vehicle, uh, but we will show you how it will actually work. Now, one of the cool things in the settings here is this camera. And like I said uh, earlier in the video when we're doing the unboxing, it actually has four cameras. Now, here it is here. This is actually showing it. You can actually assign the cameras to whatever function that you have it set up for on the vehicle. So, for example, you've got your automatic rear camera, which is when you put it in reverse, it will automatically come up. But for the front camera input on the back of the stereo, we've actually set this up for the dash camera. And you can actually choose this type of signal. So if it's a HD, NTSC, PAL, um, you can actually mirror the image. The reverse camera. Yeah, yeah. So this is all for the composite um, HD camera that Cam would have. But you can actually assign it for where it is in the vehicle. So if it was a left camera, you could assign it to be a left camera, etc. So that when you cycle through them, you actually know where the camera is actually going to sit. So it's very, very nice. Uh, I don't know what this girl in the background is doing, but... She looks very nice as well. <laughs> and, and you've actually got a couple other cameras there that you can actually set up. So nice little touches by Kenwood. Again, they've always had the parking guidelines which you can turn on and off and adjust them automatically on screen. So if your camera doesn't have it, you can actually set it up, which is one of the nice features. Now, one of the cool things I did notice to make life a little bit easier when you're doing your Apple CarPlay Android Auto setup, which is also uh, one of the primary functions of these units is you want to be able to set them up. Um, you can go into the Bluetooth device list and they've got separate pairing because the way Apple CarPlay Android Auto works, it does a handshake firstly with Bluetooth and then it will communicate later while you're using it through Bluetooth and through Wi-Fi. Um, so here you can actually see, you can set up uh, standard Bluetooth, which can run two phones at once, Apple CarPlay Android Auto, and they will all work wirelessly and wide as well through USB. Okay, so that's one of the cool features, guys. Um, Kenwoods also have a function where they have built-in steering wheel controls. So if you have an older type vehicle and you're using this type of setup, you can actually program your steering wheel controls. So you can see this here working um, to actually just straight operate themselves with the unit with no external interfaces, okay? So it's gonna save you a bit of money. So uh, we do that at Carbon Car Systems a lot. We actually custom make wiring looms so you don't need to buy any external interfaces. Um, but look, on this particular vehicle, a lot of the newer vehicles, you're gonna use one of these new iData Link interfaces from ADS in North America, um, which is gonna open up a whole heap of things on your vehicle. We're gonna show you that in a later video, guys. We've still got those coming in. Um, but look, let's go back to the unit itself and have a look. So obviously you've got the stash, you've got a nice camera, the date, you can sync that up to your GPS to show what times you're on. Um, you've got these new pictures that you can actually load onto the unit, uh, presumably uh, HD, I would uh, uh, imagine. You've got your DAB Plus here, so this is all your extra radio stations. You would still have your normal AM, FM radio as well. Um, back here on the Kenwood units, you go to your main home screen, and this is typical from all their units at the moment. Um, you've got all these little icons, and presumably you can move them around. So there you go, you can move those around, so much like you would on any smartphone. So it's really tablet-based. Um, Android units have wireless mirroring. This will no longer work for Apple, okay? Apple have been really specific on how they've done it. They do not allow wireless mirroring on any of their units. 
Kim would have released an app called the USB mirroring. I believe it has some form of functionality for USB mirroring for Apple phones and for Android, but it would be a limited capacity for um, Apple phones being that it is Apple. So it also has your HDMI, your standard AV inputs like you would your TV, standard USB, and now all of these things here, these are kind of cool. These are some of the blurred out things that we will actually open up in a later video when we show you this iDart link interface. Um, accessory control, vehicle information, gauges, climate control, parking assist, okay guys? So if you had one of those vehicles that had all this information that it can actually gain through the CAN bus interface or the software interface we put in the vehicle, these are gonna light up. You're gonna use a lot of the features on screen. So um, that's gonna be really, really cool. And that's gonna be things like tire pressure, etc varies per vehicle and your vehicle has to obviously be compatible but that's one of the biggest features of this new unit which is absolutely sick um new radio am fm your standard bluetooth site setup again i mentioned earlier in the video it is actually going to have all your audio controls so here in your audio this has a new parametric eq which allows minute adjustments for all your audio it's a 13 band eq i think it is uh, from memory uh it also has that ldac conversion which is that new sony high resolution codex and you can do that wirelessly but it also has wireless hd um you've still got all your time control or your time alignment so you can actually set your listening position and where your focus is standard fade and balances which is your standard type setup uh, for all vehicles these days but completely adjustable so you can see a lot of adjustment there for your high-end audio guys so uh, really happy with that. That's not something that they've ever been lacking on all their units, but not just this one. Uh, but this unit looks really nice. So this camera here, cool feature. You can turn your reverse camera on anytime. Like I said, this car doesn't have the camera on it yet. We'll probably put it on at a later date. But you can actually switch between your dash camera. So you can actually see here. So that's recording the front. Uh, that doesn't look like it's HD there, but it does record in HD. It just buffers at a lower rate when you're driving. But when you actually download it, it will be in HD as well. One of the cool features of the Cam ones is you can run those dash controls. And there you go, guys. That is the Apple CarPlay running. Uh, we don't have the Android Auto plugged in at the moment, but you can see that is going to give you a lot of functionality with some of your cool apps out there, like your Google Maps, your Apple Maps. Um, this will work through Siri. You've got a lot of features that will upgrade here automatically. So every time you update the phone, Apple is constantly updating this stuff. So that's really cool. Um, Waze navigation, free out there from Google. Does red light cameras, uh, speed alerts. Uh, users can update and report things. So this is one of the coolest um, apps out there for navigation. So you can actually report police. And oh, there's a report here. There's a police officer there and other people confirm it. So it's kind of a crowd-based navigation. So I really love that. And that's free too, eh? So... Um, and that's one of the benefits of all these units, guys, with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Never have to update your navigation. It's just all done through the phone for free. Uh, YouTube Music, which uh, Christian's running here on his vehicle. Uh, but there you go, guys. I presume this voice button would do Siri, as it does. And you could program that uh, to the voice button on your vehicle as well. And if you had Android Auto, that would do Google Assistant. Okay, guys. So just quickly, I'm going to add a little bit more information about this home screen because... You're going to sit on this home screen quite a lot because it's a new hub in your car. But this is some of the cool things that we just noticed. In the top right here, you can actually touch this and you can change your widgets on the unit. So this is an audio widget here. If you want a quick sound adjustability, you obviously got your time and clock and date, which is cool. Compass for those people that don't have a compass in their vehicle. And here you go. This is the camera footage, which is really, really cool because you can actually drive along and watch your dash camera footage directly on the unit, which is uh, unbelievable. And you can actually see here, you can go to your rear camera as well, so you can actually change it up and use that as you're driving, which is one of the cool things. Um, there you go, you can open it up into the main screen as well. But another cool thing, we can press and hold this and you can switch it to left-hand side. So if you are on a different side of the world, I guess that would be, or you want your passenger, or you want that information over here, and you want to control the audio on your side, you can flick that up, change it up, and make it easy for you guys to use. So very, very cool. So full HD screen, as you can see, that picture looks beautiful. Filming on an iPhone here, so hopefully that comes through. Um, I'm sure it will, but you can really see that nice picture. Beautiful, guys. So, very nice, guys. Um, we'll play with this a little bit more as we go on, but that's a quick look at the new setup that we have. So, this is all the 
DMX 90, uh, 9720, so that stands for DMX9, which is their 9 series, and the 720 is for the high definition screen, and XDS is just for one of their definers on the end of their part numbers and codes. So, very, very cool unit. So, that's a DMX 9720 XDS. It is not out just yet in Australia, but it is coming out very, very shortly, in a couple of weeks, is it? Two or months. In a couple of months, so uh, I don't know what the date is today. We're in the mid-June at the moment, so expect that in a couple of months. We will be doing a pre-order on Carbon Car Systems because there's going to be limited numbers of these that come in the country, and I expect to be huge high demand um because the first type of unit they've ever done like this and coming on the back of this COVID thing there's going to be very limited numbers so we'll do a pre-order on carbon car systems if you want to check it out on there um and that will allow you to get your unit and reserve a unit because they're going to be in massive massive demand i would imagine um but look any questions guys shoot me an email uh we're a team at carbon car systems or carbon car systems at icloud check out our youtube at carbon car systems so at carbon car systems and leave us any comments and any questions you might have, and we'll do our best to answer. Thanks, guys.